So welcome to the afternoon session of uh, HCG and IPM uh, joint number theory meeting. Uh, and our speaker is Simon Haberly, who is a postdoc at IPM. And he will talk on Satake compactification of analytic Dreamfeld modular varieties. Yeah, Simon, please. Okay, thanks, Ina. And thanks to all the organizers for organizing this meeting um, and for helping me to talk here. I'm going to talk about this. Uh, can you unmute, unmute uh, Mr. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. No problem. I'm going to talk, uh, talk about, as you said, uh, the satellite compactification for the modular varieties. And this is really work uh, for my PhD thesis that was advised by Richard Pink. Uh, so, uh, modular varieties are certain mobilized yeah. cases of. Um, uh, Twinkle modules and Twinkle modules are really functional with analogs of. She would you wait a second? But she muted in muted in Kendinese. Tamam, ben yaptım. Ben yaptım. Okay. Hmm. So I continue. Um, the modules are really functional analogs of uh, elliptic curves. And just as for uh, elliptic curves over uh, the complex numbers, there's a theory here for uh, the modules over um, a certain analog of the complex numbers that has um, an, analytic, an analytic side and an algebraic side. And I'm first going to uh, discuss the analytic side, but for the satellite compactification of an analytic Jennifer module variety, um, also the algebraic side, Plays an important role, and uh, I'm going to hopefully mention this at the end of, of the talk. The analog of uh, the complex upper half space uh, is played by the so called Greenfield upper half space. And I'm first going to um, explain what this is. So, Greenfield upper half space. Um, Starts with some um, Archimedean local field that I denote by E. So, um, the example that we'll um, talk about later is the field of Laurent series of um, over a finite field with Q elements. But at this point, it could also be QP. And C, uh, completion of an algebraic closure of E. So these are really non archimedean analogs of the real numbers and the complex numbers. And then um, V is a finite dimensional E vector space. Means you. And by VC, I denote the extension of scalars um, by C. By VC dual, by VC star, I mean it's dual. So these are the linear forms from uh, VC to C. And then um, so my pre upper half space is the following the set of linear forms in dual such that the kernel of, of L intersected with V is uh, trivial. Or equivalently, it's the linear forms whose, in, uh, whose restriction to V is injected. So this is a subspace of a subset of VC dual. And then uh, the green flag upper half space associated with uh, omega with V is the quotient by the unit group of C of this. So um, this unit group acts on the target sphere and 
we divide um, this omega purity by the group to be a subset of the projective space associated with the uh, underlying set is with C were removed and then divided by C or the means of C. Um, okay, and then these spaces have natural group actions. Um, considering this um, group action on the dual. Yeah, maps uh, G and L to L composed with G inverse. This is the natural left action of the automorphism group of DC on the dual. And so this is uh, an invariant on the automorphism group of V. So at your automorphism group of V naturally sits inside here. And the second case is invariant on the absolute invariant on the this. And this Inter double half space is invariant under um, GLD, which is the homogeneous group of V divided by um, the units of P. And this is a locally profinite topological group. And if we um, choose the basis of V, then we get a, a more familiar description of this uh, upper half space. That D is a, we want to be D is a basis of uh, V. Um, then omega V embeds into um, the upline space of dimension D minus one, we will see the class of elements of linear forms we map to the following uh, tuple. And we actually land in uh, the step um, where we remove all the e linear hyperplanes. What is V0? Oh, sorry. And thanks. Um, so V0 is. Let me really get this. Um, okay, and if um, D is one, if D is um, one, yes, or if D is two, sorry, then uh, this is nothing but C without um, without E. And in the analogy with um, with the curves, this corresponds uh, formally to C without R, but not um, morally. Um, so the correct analog is the upper half space. Um, so C without E is a truly connected um, variety and See whether it R has two connected components. So that's one reason why um, this is the right analog. But there are others, of course, as well. Um, yes. And then Rindler showed that um, omega V is actually a not miscible subset of the rigid analytic variety um, on the line PV C2. Okay. 1974, we um, showed that omega v is admissible in there. So let me say what I mean by this. The projective space has some um, structure of which is an analytic variety over C. And what are they? They are um, some, they're an analog of complex analytic spaces. 
but they are not exactly defined analogously. So um, complex analytic spaces are really uh, certain ring spaces. But if we did this analogously here, we would get too many open sets. So what one does is one restricts to a certain um, uh, subcollection of the open sets, uh, they are, and they are called uh, admissible. And these admissible sets they form a certain property topology. And so the right um, framework is uh, quantity ring spaces here to work with. So rigid analytic varieties are certain quantity ring spaces. There you have the notion of admissible subsets, which replaces the notion of open subsets. But it doesn't harm if you um, think of admissible just as open at this point or throughout the talk. So this is some, some uh, uh, nice sub variety of the rich analytic variety PDC tool. And Ginter also showed that um, the quotient. Of omega v by any discrete subgroup of PGLV is again a rigid analytic variety. In fact, it's an integral. Um, normal rigid analytic variety. Let me say more precisely what, what this means. So, omega v has some structure of property topological space, and as such, it is a rich analytic variety. Now, a quotient of such a property ring space has a natural structure of quantity ring space again. So an admissible set there, subset there is, is just one whose pre-image uh, under the quotient morphism is admissible. And we have a much more uh, notion of um, structure sheet. Just take the chief of invariance. And then so what Pinter showed is that this uh, quantity ring space that you get on the quotient is also a rich analytic variety and as such it's integral and more. Okay. So this is about general uh, printed upper half spaces and I'm going to talk about um, an irreducible component of my analytic, uh, my analytic input modular variety uh, that I want to compactify. And actually I'm going to compactify just an irreducible component and the compactification of the full modular variety should the disjoint union of the compactification of the irreducible component. Okay, let me describe a um, typical irreducible component of uh, printed modular variety. And so the, we need our function fields, so let that be a function field. So it could be um, a rational function field. And let this be uh, the norm associated with the place of f, so some um, variation of f. This uh, mm -hmm. in this case of the rational function field, um, the norm of the fraction of the elements is just the, so these are polynomials, both in the norm of the fraction is q minus. Two. of Q. And P uh, is the completion. 
of f with respect to this norm. And C, as before, is the completion of some algebraic closure of E. Okay, and then um, the analog of the integers is, uh, is it's a certain ring A in F, the subring of all elements that are regular at all places that are different from the fixed one. In this case, um, a the case of the function, rational function field, um, what you get is just FGT, the polynomial ring in one variable. And actually, E is the normal series ring, but in one over T. So, what properties does A have? It's a dedicated domain, uh, which is finitely generated over FQ. And it has a finite unit group and it's discrete in, in E. Then I fix the um, non zero finitely generated projective A model. Give you the rank of, of lambda. I'm going to apply the uh, previous section to um, the following vector space over E. It's just the extension of lambda by, by scalars. So the um, essential upper half spaces is also abbreviated by omega lambda and omega lambda two. Okay. Then some. Uh, Basic lemma says that the image of the dimorphism group of lambda in feature omega lambda e uh, is discrete. We can quotient um, the upper half space by, by such an image. I'm going to consider more generally uh, any congruent, sub, any congruent subgroup of the democracy group of lambda. So by this I mean a subgroup which contains um, gamma J, which is the kernel of the following map, it goes from the automorphism group of lambda to um, The quotient by uh, J times lambda for some non zero idea in A. We are completely analogous, analogous to the congruent subgroup of SL2 set. And yeah, I that can show that. Quotient omega lambda by gamma, which I abbreviate by omega gamma, is a typical irreducible component of a green that modular variety. The 
So I'm not going to define the analytic simple modular variety in detail, but I'm just going to give you uh, a description as a, as a set of such a analytic fringe modular variety in a special case. So if number is number two, then as a set, the modular variety consists of pairs y and beta. Where y is a finitely projected, finitely joint projected A module sitting in, in C. And such that natural. Maximum sensory product with E to C is injected. So um, such such wise are called lattices, A lattices of, of C. And eta is a little structure, so goes from um, a of J to the B to Y of J times Y. And maybe here, as a multiple. And here you have natural action again of, a, of the unit group of C and the quotient like this. But this is, a, as I said, the analytic term of multiple variety and omega how much we embed into this? So, how we take a class represented by some linear form L and we map this to um, a lattice L of lambda. And for the level structure, we need to first fix an um, isomorphism between omega. Between this finitely finite um, rank Emoji module and um, lambda module, J lambda. So fix this and then um, impose this fixed isomorphism with the um, map induced by error from. Um, here to here. So yeah, this is how omega gamma j embeds as an irreducible component in the um, full printed module variety. At least as that. Now I want to um, describe the compactification of omega gamma. First, I uh, consider the following distant unions. One is the distant union over all um, Mega Tilde L, L, where L is a non zero direct sum of number. Just a distant union of sets and same for uh, same without student. So um, the distribution of the omega L's with all direct summons in, in lambda. And the Compactification of omega uh, gamma will be a quotient by gamma will be the quotient by gamma of this. And first, I now define a broken topology on this um, distribution, and then the broken topology on the quotient. 
will be um, the quotient represents the quotient. Okay. I said I'm going to define the topology, but I'm just going to give some to define some um, subsets that work as something like a basis for the topology. These that are of the following form: so any direct sum. Um, and so any admissible subset in uh, omega L, and also for any element in the um, 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 in the value group of the unit group of C, I get um, U O R the um, following uh, set of cylindrical form, so it's all L in omega lambda star. So really pass it again. And such an element lives in some um, component and if omega lambda prime is this component, so then it's in here, uh, then L prime needs to contain L. I'm just not considering the omega L primes above omega L. And so I can restrict L to big L. And I want this a projection down to omega L to land inside the fixed subset of it. The condition in the normal direction and the third uh, condition will be in the horizontal direction. So, um, so it's that the increment of all um, L, the value of all L numbers, where we go over the elements in number prime, which are not in L, is bigger than R times. This. Some of the, the lattice outside um, L of lambda has, has um, elements with high norms as compared to the elements of um, L lambda. So you have two things here. Um, L lambda, which is a sub lattice of L lambda prime. And so we can look at its complement. And this third um, condition says that the elements of this are at much higher norm than the elements of this. Um, so, an example so if E equals two, and the rank of L equals one. So then we have um, the omega lambda star uh, this uh, analogy with the complex upper half space corresponds to um, the upper half space union Q and um, infinity. So, um, And U omega L bar corresponds to H, no, corresponds to these um, subsets here. Um, so tau in H whose imaginary part is greater than R, a joint and viewing with uh, the infinity point. So omega L, since L is of rank one is really just a point. So this point uh, corresponds to infinity.
if we choose the basis of lambda um, CPT. Now, in the uh, omega lambda star, it is suitable gordon dick topology. I'm not going to define this uh, precisely, but just uh, state two important condition, uh, properties that this gordon dick topology satisfies. It is such that, in particular, Um, the U O R, as we run over all O O's and all R's, and form a basis of the topology. Um, Underlying the Grothendi topology is some topology, and for this, it's um, the form of basis. And also, such that omega lambda, which already sits inside omega lambda star, is dense and open, is dense and admissible. As I said, I want to into, um, make a quotient of, of this by gamma. So what is the action of gamma? Mm -hmm. The natural extension of the action from omega L, omega lambda. So if gamma is this gamma and L is in this distant view, then it sits in ah, I can actually do it for, for the tilde and get a C um, get a C linear action. So maybe look at linear form. So a linear form sits in some boundary omega L tilde. And these two omega, and these two gamma inverse compose this L. And so this is gamma of L. So this is omega two gamma L. This is linear under the natural action of the unit group of C. So I also get a gamma action on omega lambda star. Now I consider the double quotient um, of, of this omega lambda star cube, quotient by gamma and uh, group of C. So this omega gamma star is the same as omega lambda star divided by gamma. And though this with uh, the quotient of the topology. So a subset of this quotient is by definition admissible if its pre-image in here is, is admissible. And let P be the upper quotient morphism. And so this Double quotient map, I'm now using to define um, the structure sheet on Omega Gamma star and to define certain sheets here, which will turn out to be ample invertible. So 
the orange choose K and all um, admissible subsets X of maybe from a star. Um, the shift that I want to define evaluated at X this of the functions from uh, H of X to C, such that uh, the following three conditions uh, are satisfied. Uh, one is um, that F is gamma invariant. And the second condition is that for all uh, C in the unit group of C and for all L in this pre image. With this condition, that f of c times l is p to the minus k of f of n. And these two conditions are the conditions of um, weak modular forms in, in our system. Here, um, and also, that needs to satisfy some continuity and regularity conditions that I'm not going to. Um, Right out in detail. Rather, I would like to um, uh, give an explicit and important example to the one of the, uh, the one of Eisenstein series. Which are global sections of um, these sheets. So let P be the quotient, pi be the quotient modulus from lambda e to lambda e divided by lambda, and choose some W in, in this quotient. And K is again in, well, K is now a positive integer. Then, um, defined on any L in any boundary component. As follows. Um, WK of L is full and sum. We go lambdas in the pre image of I pre image of W uh, on the pi and we intersect it with L. All the means you lambda in the so if W is fixed is fixed by the natural action of the on the quotient by gamma. Then um, WK is a global section of these of the sheaf omega gamma K. And this uh, Eisenstein series will be used to um, define projected embeddings of or a projected embedding of omega gamma star. A is zero, then we really get a sheaf of rings. And I abbreviate this by omega star. 
And this is um, the structure sheet from, from my uh, compactification. So now um, I have a to this here. Many parts, so let's let's go um, step by step. So this pair omega gamma star, omega O gamma star is a Grothendieck space by construction, and the theorem then says that as such, it is actually an integral normal projective rigid analytic variety. So, I think it's so uh, it's up here. You're also not clear that this is a rigid analytic variety. And certainly not clear that it's projective and that it's normal. And all of these uh, properties will be shown uh, simultaneously using a projective embedding. And omega gamma. Um, it's a dense and admissible sub variety of this um, projective variety. Now, to uh, understand the uh, boundary behavior or the stratification method, let lambda be any um, direct sum. Let L be any direct sum and consider the following subset of omega gamma star. I take all the um, translates by translate of L by elements of gamma and all the associated boundary components. Take the union of those and then uh, gamma metry restricts to an action on, on this, this joint union. And I take the uh, quotient of this and I eliminate this by omega gamma times lambda. And this is subset in here. And so let's jump to two. Um, this subset is a Tsarisky locally closed subset of this omega gamma star. Oops. Omega gamma star. And also, um, the, the Tsarisky closure, closure of it um, um, is the union of, of similarly defined. Um, uh, subset omega gamma uh, prime, and they run over all uh, direct sums containing the error. So this um, yields a stratification of omega gamma star by such um, irreducible. I forgot to write this down. Actually, it was irreducible. Irreducible locally closed subsets, and this second condition. Uh, explains how they behave under um, taking closures. So they really give a, a nice um, unexpected maybe um, specification of the modulus of, of this compactification. And yeah, the theme of this says that um, um, I, I would like um, I would like to ignore this now. Um, so this has, uh, as a locally closed subset, it has the structure of locally uh, of rigid analytic variety. And now this uh, says that it's some of the expected uh, one or that it behaves as expected on the morphisms. More uh, importantly, for now, I find uh, the remaining part. So, if um, gamma is fine, so this is a no notion introduced by Pink in the algebraic setting. What do I mean? Um, for some maximal ideal, the image of gamma in this um, morphism group of lambda divided by um, times lambda, if the image is unipotent, unipotent for some such uh, maximal ideal. Then the sheet that I defined above is uh, ample invertible on this rigid analytic variety if k is bigger than t. And so it's because um, we have something, we have a projective rigid analytic variety, and we have an ample invertible sheet. 
Peter Gomez Dark Key. Um, it's been a standard argument that shows that um, the digital analytic variety is actually the identification of something algebraic, and the algebraic thing is the weak approach of the global sections, the gradient of global sections of these uh, amply invertible sheets. Number six uh, describes these, um, uh, these uh, global sections, compares these global sections with the uh, uh, space of infinite modular forms, and gamma k uh, introduced by uh, first close and Gecker when the rank is two, and in general by Basson, Breuer, and uh, Pink. They defined uh, modular forms as certain uh, as a certain certain elements in in, in here. So um, they live over the frequency. Um, they live over omega gamma. So in the dense open sub or the dense open subset, they live. These are exactly the weak modular forms. So, using a, a certain theory of Fourier expansion, they define um, M gamma, K, M gamma K as those uh, weak modular forms whose um, Fourier expansions have uh, no negatively indexed terms. So, this is similar to uh, theory of Fourier expansions of usual modular forms. Again, this um, six then says that the restriction map from the global section of the compactification to the global section of the interior is injective and um, has image exactly these um, modular forms. So in other words, these um, global sections identify with the modular forms under this on the restriction map. Um, let me say something about the proof of one to five a bit uh, later after I quickly discuss number six. Um, okay. For number six, uh, consider the following. Um, Space of omega gamma star. It's um, omega lambda in the union with all um, for dimension one boundary components. A certain sub subset of omega lambda star and it's gamma invariant, and we take the quotient of this. And then um, this map, this restriction map, actually factors through um, um, this uh, subset. So a priori we expect this as, as, as follows. Um, so here we restrict, here we restrict, and composition to the restriction. The full uh, compactification to uh, the interior. But since um, omega gamma star is, is normal, since we have a normal uh, variety, and since this has um, a complement which is of co dimension greater uh, uh, equal to two. This uh, map here is 
uh, by ejection by normality and the Riemann extension theory. Theorem. So, so we have a bijection here by normality essentially. We have a bijection here by the theory of uh, Fourier expansion essentially. It's how um, normality is used to identify these two uh, spaces. And okay, then I would like to say something about the proof of one to five. Um, so let me also say that um, what we got here, I forgot to say this, um, this, this stratification in two is parameterized by um, gamma orbits of direct summons of lambda by construction. But direct summons of lambda, they, um, they take uh, gamma orbits here. But they correspond to um, subvector spaces. Once you have subvector spaces of um, This f, uh, f vector space obtained by uh, extension of scales. Um, and there come orbits. And these um, correspond bijectively bijek to um, maximal parabolic subgroups of the homomorphism group of this uh, vector space. Mm, yeah. So this theorem is, is largely analogous to the theorem of Sarkati Bailey Borel, um, who compactified um, certain uh, locally symmetric spaces. But the proof of the theorem is, is a bit uh, different. So in our case, it uses the algebraic theory a lot. To use the algebraic theory, we need to uh, reduce um, to a special. Gamma. The special gamma is obtained as follows. The left let gamma J be containing gamma and choose some T in J non zero such that A is generated as. A Matthew algebra by the following set of devices of the set of devices of the Why does such a T exist? Um, well, it can be explicitly constructed as follows. So since A is finite generate of over FQ. Take finite, um, take finitely many generators, uh, multiply them, and multiply them by a non zero element of, of J. And so you get uh, element T in J um, that by construction satisfies the specific condition. That's really, uh, it's really there, this T. And um, gamma contains gamma t. We get the gamma t by gamma prime, and it's then a normal subgroup of gamma 
that, that would be the quotient, which is a finite, um, finite group. Then there's broken degree in spaces. We have um, the following equality. This one link space is really the quotient um, broken between space of omega gamma prime by uh, Ritter. Similarly, all, all the um, sheaves, which is sheaves of invariance of the according sheaves of gamma prime. We're using this, and this is actually true for any uh, normal circuit in priming gamma. It's not the, on particular choice. Uh, this and standard arguments. Uh, to the case the format is going to print. In that case, um, consider the Following module, so you uh, this, uh, this sits in lambda e divided by lambda. It's a uh, e, name of t module of rank um, equal to the rank of lambda, which was e. And let not be um, w with, uh, w with uh, zero removed. And as w of as w not uh, that be the polynomial ring in the variables um, indexed by the elements of w not. Any uh, element in here, take a variable and consider the, the polynomial ring with uh, the natural gradient. And let P be the project. And let E then be the following map from omega gamma star to um, C value points of P. Um, take the multiplication actually, um, the multiplication of this um, as set coincides with the maximum points of. With the close points of PDC, so um, how is it defined? Um, it's induced by the following map, which maps uh, an element L to um, the variation. All um, Eisenstein series of weight one. And this is the desired projective embedding um, that will yield um, 
uh, parts one to five. So it's maybe in two minutes I can explain a little bit um, uh, algebraic stuff. So in fact, there uh, exists some graded idea in S W naught. Um, such that um, the use closed sub scheme of PW defined like this um, satisfies the following uh, pro properties. So, very close to, to the uh, to the subtractive combat algebraic subtractive combatification of of um, Infelt modular varieties. So, in fact, uh, the normalization of this cube is uh, things. Uh, I was jumping ahead. So, uh, Q is naturally stratified by certain locally closed sub keys, omega W prime. Um, and W prime goes over all three A mod T sum of of omega of W. And they are really the modularized schemes of printed modules of this rank with level T structure that I cannot uh, define in this talk. I will tell you this. But so um, something very similar exists on, on the algebraic side. So stratification of some projective uh, scheme by moduli, moduli schemes of printed modules. And it's actually such that uh, omega w in q is open. And so omega w is really the, um, the algebraic counterpart of the print field, analytic print field modular variety that we were considering. So um, if we take the normalization of this, we get um, what is known as Pink's uh, subtract compactification. Of, of this uh, intermodular variety. We can also not um, describe this. For our um, first here, what is important then is that uh, E the map, maps uh, onto an irreducible component of the C value points of Q. You know this Y, and actually it's uh, Inject it, yeah, it must project it onto it, and it's in fact the normalization morphism of Y. Um, e behaves nicely with respect to the stratification, so it maps stratification to stratification. And the pullback of the K uh, twisting sheet by Serre on the projective space P, V, C, dual here. Um, after analytification becomes um, this chief here by a pull back in, by a pulling back. Um, this is some of the, the, um, the bright side of the first view. And I should say that um, in the case where A is FQT, this scheme was uh, a very natural candidate, was already found by Pink and Schiebel long 10 years ago. Um, and this is inspired the, the theorem in general. Um, but I cannot discuss this in detail, but also Pink um, found a very, very um, explicit ideal I in general, um, which Satisfies the theorem, but it's, it's also very useful beyond um, this theorem. For instance, it might be very useful to um, describe uh, stratification on the, on, the, on his uh, normal subject, on his normal compactification in a very precise number. Okay. Uh, let me stop here. Thank you for the attention. Uh, thank you, Simon, for talk. Thank you very much. So.
any questions or comments we have only so we are uh, 1407 so three minutes of comments or questions please So maybe uh, let's thank our speaker once more. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so now I stop the recording.